Hello, I'm David DeCosmo. Welcome to ECTV Live. I'm joined by my co-host, Wes Defender. Rusty? Good to see you, David. Good back. to see you. Yes, thanks so much for sitting in last week. Oh, you're very welcome. I'm glad right. you're a little more mobile. Uh, a little more mobile. Little, just, just a little just a more. little bit. Still tap dancing around a foot problem. <laughs> Absolutely. But, uh, uh, the guest that I brought in today has been with us before. His organization has been in the headlines so much lately that I felt it was time to bring him back. Bill Goldsworthy is with the American Red Cross. And Bill, you, you cover quite a wide area in, in northeastern Pennsylvania, yes? Yeah, first of all, thanks for having me. And uh, yes, we cover Northeast PA, which we call Northeast PA, Luzerne, Lackawanna, Wyoming, and Susquehanna counties, okay. four counties. Now, admittedly, when we <clears throat> think about Red Cross, I think the first thing that comes to mind in, uh, to most people is, is blood donations blood. because Absolutely. there's a constant need and a constant request for blood donations. Or their mantra when disaster strikes. And that yeah. is primarily why I have you here today because uh, all of a sudden our area has been dis besieged by various you wouldn't call them all disasters, but you certainly would call them emergency situations. And uh, you can give us a little laundry list if you want yeah, about what's and, happened over the past couple of months. And they are disasters to those affected. Uh, you're so, right. You're right. Um, yes. it, actually, in the past 23 days, some of our longtime volunteers said it's the busiest they have ever been since the floods of 2011 and floods prior to that. I don't but doubt that. But in the that, past no. 23 days, we've responded to 33 emergencies. Wow. And when we say emergencies, they're emergency responses for various things. Fires. We had a tornado. We never get that. Yeah, you're but, right. Okay. We've had that Route 81 incident down by Hazleton, a 30-car pileup. We responded to that. And of course, you know, all the other things that we do, uh, including stuff for our veterans and uh, responding to various incidents we we were even st patrick's day parades and they weren't counted in those events these were emergency responses where we had to help people uh which is what we do yeah, yeah. and and the fires of course you know when someone gets burned out of a home they need someone to even if it's just a hug and a, and a hold them and smile but we're there to provide services to them for example we'll put them usually put them up in hotels provide them with food a lot of people get burned out of their homes and they don't have clothes for work the next day. You know, you don't things you don't think of. You're the first trauma buffer that they see. Absolutely. Absolutely. They and and most and we don't get called to all the fires, believe it or not. Some fire chiefs don't call us because the people that get burned out will say, Oh, I'll go stay with my brother mm -hmm. or something and they say, Oh, we don't need the Red Cross. But we provide other services. We should be called all the time. When I, I, I think out of I a may home. be repeating myself from your last visit, but when I was on the news beat and I was sent to a fire and I, I came across victims, people who had been burned out, I asked two questions. And the first question I always ask was, is everybody all right? And the second question I asked is, or asked was, has anybody told you about the Red Cross? Yep. Uh, because I was aware as a reporter that your services were available, but not all people know uh, that they are. I mean, uh, they think about people on the scene of an emergency and think about people that uh, uh, hand out coffee and donuts, which is, can be crucial. Don't get me wrong as though I'm minimizing that. But on the other hand, even a fire that is somewhat minor uh, can force a family out perhaps just for a day. Absolutely. And when it's at this time of year and you're, f you know, you're facing frigid temperatures at night, they don't always have a relative they can go to right away. So I, I guess you've got it arranged. Was it a voucher system? How does yes. that work, Bill? Yeah, it's basically a, almost like a gift card we give you that you would take to uh, some of the participating hotels that we have. We get special rates. Um, and they'll put you up for the evening, and you just use that card. And that card could also be used at wherever, Walmart, to go buy clothes or food. Uh, <laughs> And, and you mentioned, like, you know, you, you don't realize how devastating it is. You also got to think about if there's a child in the family. That is devastating to a child to think they lost their toys, their oh, computer, sure, sure. Absolutely. maybe their pets. And, you know, we do have counselors that we do provide that in different cases we'll bring them to the scene with us too 
for that purpose, to help the kids, or God forbid, if there's a death in the family, you know, in the fire, that we're there to provide counseling services for anyone else in the home, or even the neighbors sometimes need it. Were you overwhelmed by that many uh, situations in that short a period? David, we have remarkable volunteers. You know, we have 400 and some registered volunteers in my chapter, my four counties. God bless them because I'll tell you what, they, without them there is no Red Cross and they are so dedicated. We have some volunteers that in a month they'll give us four, six hundred, four hundred, six hundred hours of volunteer time. And they're there. When they get the call, they come out. and. Uh, I, we could always use more volunteers, you know, but and we always need more volunteers. And it does, you don't have to do the 400 hours. Give us an hour a week. Give us two hours a week, which is the normal, a couple hours a week. But we have some volunteers that, they, it just, it, you know, it's almost, I was a volunteer fireman. You know, it gets in your blood. Like, you don't want to give it up. You want to do more. And that's what happens. You want to do more. Yeah, but you have to know what you're doing. Absolutely. Because when you're dealing with the people who are facing these kinds of calamities, uh, it, it, it's not only saying, here, I have a voucher. I mean, there's some psychology involved in, in approaching That's them right. and everything else. It's, so It's funny you mention that because right now, most of our volunteers this past weekend, including today, it was Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, are down at Allentown uh, at a community college down there for what we call our Disaster Institute and they're being trained on various forms of responding to disasters. Like a sensitivity training. Absolutely. Some, some of them are being uh, trained on how to be a counselor, to, to put their arm around you and talk to you. Mm -hmm. Some of them are being trained on how to prepare mass feeding. We have a huge feeding trailer down here. We work with uh, the NEPA, the EMS people in, in Pittston. They have a management, huge, yeah. Mm -hmm. They have this huge feeding trailer that we partner with them, we use it, we provide the cooks and everything. So we're down there training our people how to prepare meals for hundreds of people out of that trailer. Uh, others are getting trained on how to provide services for those in fires. Others are get, being provi provided training on, for floods. We don't, we don't usually train for tornadoes up here, but no, even but though how, we did have one. How were you able to, uh, what types of services were offered in that situation? That, for the tornado? Yeah. Well, actually, I, I was on scene for that, and uh, we waited a, a little bit because we had to wait to make sure it was safe for our volunteers sure. to go out. When we got up there, the first person I met was the family that lost the entire roof of their home. And I didn't realize it was his home. I said, I knew that, I happened to know the guy. And I said, Charlie, how you doing? He said, well, it'd be better if I had a roof on my house. Wow. wow. And you don't realize what happened, though. The roof blew off in that torrential rain. They were Absolutely. in their home. They were very lucky. They were in the basement. But water started filling in their basement. I mean, it was raining so hard, they ended up with like four feet of water in their basement. Oh, my word. So all of their, everything they owned was wet. Uh, so in that case, we helped. I, I made a couple calls, and I was able to get a warehouse that we brought all of his stuff to. We didn't, but he had volunteers bring all his stuff to this warehouse, it was a heated warehouse, to help dry it out and try and help save some of his lifelong possessions. Mm -hmm. uh, but then we provided him with, uh, you know, a hotel if they needed it. He didn't need it, he had family. But there was others up there that had a lot of roof damages. We provided the same thing as we do in a yeah. fire. Hotels just to get them a place to sleep in the middle it's of the night. It's interesting though that uh, uh, there is, uh, some things that are sort of normal, you're going to do this, you're going to do that in, in this situation. But when you get an unusual situation, you've got a little bit of learning on the job as well. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the other big thing we do, and you touched on it earlier, uh, we provide coffee and donuts, sandwiches. You know, for example, that 30 car pileup on 81. Well, people were traveling, lost their cars, so they needed a place to stay. So we took care of them. So we had a group at the hotels taking care of them and feeding them because they were stuck out in the highway for hours. But the emergency responders were on Route 81 in that cold weather for like 14 hours. Yeah. So we yeah. brought food to them, food and drinks, because you know you, you go to a fire or an emergency, you don't pack a lunch. No, and <laughs> you, know, you don't right? get to leave the scene. And you don't get to right? leave. So we brought it to them because they were there for so long. So we had two teams going on that day. You know, which is amazing. You know, uh, the day they evacuated the federal building in Wilkesbury, 300 people standing in the parking lot for hours. We went and supplied them with drinks 
and snacks just because they couldn't leave. They weren't allowed to leave the parking the lot. things you don't think of. You yeah. know, not only is it the responding, but it, the fact is that you have to respond and know what to do quickly. That's yep. the deal. Yeah. When there's a tornado, you have to get it in gear, even though it hasn't been one in about eight years. You yeah. have to know what to do quickly is the sure. point. Yeah. Sure. So. Now, when you do something, when you're responding to something like that uh, evacuation of the building, where are you getting all these supplies that you bring down to give them the food and to give them the drink? We, we have a warehouse of, of water and Gatorade and things like that that we keep and, and snacks, if you will, like bags of chips and cookies that... They'll stay for a that, while. That'll stay for yeah. a while. We have that, but like in a case like that, we made arrangements with a couple of local pizza places and they delivered us trays of pizza and we supplied them with pizza. Everybody likes pizza. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. So, so it depends on the situation, what we get, you know, on Route 81, they wanted coffee, they were freezing, you know, so we, we, we supplied them with hot drinks, you know, so it all depends on the situation and really what we need and what we have to supply. Sometimes it's sandwiches, sometimes it's actual meals, that's why we're partnering with uh, EMS sure. with that trailer. Sure. Yeah. So while blood donations may be the thing people think about with Red Cross, and they're needed, Absolutely. They're needed, all, they're needed all the time. Yeah, we, we supply 40% uh, of the blood for the country, so that's, yeah. it, it, blood's always needed. How do you pay for everything else? We pay for by people out in the, in the community, your, your viewers. Businesses make donations, and just every nor, everyday normal people. And, I, and I'll tell you one quick story. There's a gentleman here in Scranton, and obviously I won't mention the name, we get every single week an envelope with him from him with $5 in it, wow. cash, $5, every, every, and a little note, use this however you have to. And it's people like that that are so dedicated to supporting the Red Cross. The Red Cross, and you know I was in politics, so I love to say this line, we are the largest unfunded government mandate. <laughs> We're mandated by the U.S. Congress to respond to every natural well, disaster. You get no money from and we get no money. We get no money. Well, that's so, a great deal, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, right? Yeah, make sure you go, but we're not giving you anything to go. <laughs> but uh, we, we count on the support of the community and, and, and of local businesses. And uh, next, next week, we have our 100th anniversary celebration of serving Northeast PA. Wow, what an oh. anniversary. That's We've been here 100 years this year. Uh, actually, it's March is the, uh, I believe, the month for, they're all about two months difference. There was a, there, there was a Pittston chapter, believe it or not, a Hazleton, Wilkesbury, and Scranton, and they were all within two months, but this is the year. Well, you are tremendously successful. I've, I've hosted about seven or eight of the blood drives with uh, Bob Plebin at Pocono Raceway right. every year. And that's tremendous. They get, uh, you know, folks from yeah. the tri-state area from New York and New Jersey as well. So y you can't say that um, there's no such thing as bad publicity, but it's like you really don't need any more publicity even though it's always required for something like that because people really do go the extra mile for that. A lot of people do. And, and, and you know, for blood, I mean, there's always so many. Like I, I, I donate my plasma platelets faithfully every month, and there's so many people that do that, you know. Uh, blood, the double reds, like or whatever it is, you can do every 56 days, and like they want to be there 56 days mm -hmm. because yeah. they want to. They don't want to lose uh, an opportunity to give. You know, mm -hmm. it's amazing how the, the dedication. Yeah. And again, it's like the dedicated volunteers we have. Tell me about the celebration that's coming up. Yeah, the celebration uh, Thursday, March 23rd. It's at Mohegan Sun, and it's going to be from 5 to 8 p.m. Uh, tickets are $50, which again, you're supporting the Red Cross. But at the same time, besides honoring our 100th year of celebrating uh, our, our good things that we've been doing here in the, in the valley, in, in Northeast PA, we're also t combining it with honoring our local heroes. Yeah, I wanted we, to bring that up too because you, it's not the first time you've done that. In the course of responding to these emergencies, to these disasters, there are some people that uh, go the extra mile. And the Red Cross is now making a real special effort to celebrate those people. They're nominated, I guess, by various agencies, yep. by various individuals. Um, and I think if you give us a little list about some of those that are being honored this year, people will see the kind of heroes we have right in our own backyard. It's amazing. You don't realize the heroes we have in our own backyard. Um, for example, there was a, a, a woman who's a nurse in a local hospital here but who lives in Hazleton area 
who was on vacation and helped rescue two people out of the ocean and perform CPR on them and save their lives. There's uh, two patrolmen from Duryea who pulled someone out of a burning home and provided CPR and saved their lives. And that went unsung, because I'm the vice president of the Civil Service Commission in Duryea. That went unsung to any of the press in the area. I'm glad you folks are doing something about that. We're honoring Absolutely. them. Absolutely. Yeah, we're honoring them. CPR training, by the way, is offered by the Red Cross. By the Red Cross. <laughs> yes. um, there was a, a fire in Freeland where three firemen and three citizens pulled people out of a home, saved them from their burning home. So they were honoring those folks. There's, uh, in Dallas, there was two law enforcement personnel who pulled uh, people out of a house filling with carbon monoxide. They uh -huh. went in and got them out and were able to save their lives. Another example of uh, uh, when you have a, a disastrous situation, uh, you find most people running away from it, and you find these kind of people running to it, right? Exactly. The, uh, the uh, police officer in West Pittston who uh, helped save a man from um, jumping off the bridge in, in between Pittston and West Pittston. And uh, the, he was recently honored, and the gentleman that he saved was there and was so thankful, and that policeman has been honored. The uh, state policeman who would not give up when that car went over the bank a couple months ago in, in, on Route 80, yeah. mm -hmm. and he would not give up the search because he knew the guy was out there somewhere, and he finally found him. And so we're honoring that state trooper for being persistent and, and just fe feeling his gut instinct and following it. Uh, and there's a, a really unique one, uh, a retired gentleman who owns his own airplane and flies animal rescue missions along the whole entire East Coast yeah. and rescues animals, mainly dogs. And that, that's just amazing that someone would spend his own time, money, and, and do that. Yeah, I'd heard about how they said pets and pilots, or pilots and yes. pets, one of those two. Yep, yep. Yeah. Pilots and paws. Pilots and paws, yeah. okay, yeah, that's a real special effort. Yeah, <laughs> and there was, there was also a young girl from, uh, who worked at the Pittston Y, who pulled someone out of the pool and provided CPR and saved the man's life. And she was very young at the time, I believe, like in her teens. She, er, and now she's, uh, she works at a law firm in Harrisburg. <laughs> so she's gonna be up to help us. Uh, and there was two, two law enforcement personnel in Archibald uh, here in Lackawanna County who also went into a burning building and, and saved some people. So. That's the kind of people we're honoring. And yeah. uh, we do it every year, and we're tying it this year into our centennial celebration uh, to help make it bigger and, and make it a nice event. And again, it's the 100th anniversary, so we really would appreciate anyone who's out there who would like to join us. Uh, you, can, you can get tickets one of two ways, if I may. Can yes, I, go can ahead. Can I put a plug in? Uh, you can call 570-846-3308 yeah. or 09, either one. And, or you could order them right online at redcross.org slash NEPA, N-E-P-A 100, 100th anniversary. You do a good job in politicking. This is politicking even after your years in politics. <laughs> That's true. It's That's kind true. of a different segue, though. Do you miss politics? In the well, a little bit, uh, but it's, you know what? In politics, I always felt I was there to help people. And that's what I'm doing now. Exactly. So it's the yeah. exact same yeah. thing. Exactly. And, and I get to help more people. You know, pe people say, well, what do you do every day as the director of the Red Cross? I said, you know what? Every day I feel great because I think I did something that if they're not helping someone today, it'll help them tomorrow. And you never know. It's yeah. around the next bend, too, like that exactly. tornado. No, no. I and, mean, you could literally get called while we're here that there's something going that's on. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the one thing I really like, and I, and I hope you don't mind, I, I know we talked about it last time I was on the air, but... We install free smoke alarms. Yeah, this is a great service. Yeah, it's a great service. We, we have, since I've spoken to you guys last, all right, in a, a year and three months now, we have installed 6,361 smoke alarms. <laughs> Boy, that's great. Free for anyone who wants them. And we go out into various sections of the community. Now, I know we have another big event scheduled in Lackawanna County in May. Uh, this month we're in Luzerne County in two, two big installs. And what we do is usually go out on a Saturday, we partner with a fire company and volunteer groups. If there's any groups out there that would like to participate, just give us a call. Uh, we get rotary clubs, we get women's organizations, we get church organizations, anybody that wants to partner with us. We go out for four hours, it's basically from 10 to two. 
on a Saturday, and we install usually about 300 smoke alarms in each you day. You go door to door, literally. We or? go to literally go to door to door, and if they're not home, we leave a hanger on, and then uh, usually we get calls saying, "Oh, I missed you. Could you come back?" But we we will install smoke alarms in every single bedroom and one on every floor. And they're 10-year guaranteed smoke alarms. Uh, Every 10 years, you should change your smoke alarm. A lot of people, you know, as you're supposed to do yesterday, by the way, to change the batteries. Change the, yes. change the batteries. Correct. You know, uh, and everybody thinks, oh, it's good. The battery works. The chambers in there go bad. They should be replaced every 10 years, even if they are working. And uh, these are guaranteed for 10 years. And so. good publicity for Kitta as well. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. It really is. But um, we, we get a, a lot of support from the local fire departments and, lo and uh, local volunteer groups. So if anybody out there wants to help us, and, or if you need smoke alarms, give us a call. So we, anybody watching that maybe needs smoke alarms can call the Red Cross? Yes, we have, a ver we have a special line set up for smoke alarms. You could call 570-846-8328. And with that phone number, you leave your name, your address, and, and your, your uh, phone number, and we'll call you back and set up an appointment and come and install it. This completely destroys the idea that you don't get you know, there's something for nothing does exist. It does. You have to know where to call, yeah. though. That, that's the bottom <coughs> line. <coughs> yep, it does. We, we will do <coughs> it for free. And uh, we, we have an amazing, again, it's, it's volunteers. There's the ultimate life-saving service right oh, there. Sure, yeah. sure. The ultimate. Sure. How right. many fires have I covered uh, where there's been deaths and uh, uh, ultimately the fire department tells you, you know, there's no, no, no working alarms. smoke yeah. alarm. The, no working, and that's yeah. the key, too, because some people have the smoke right. alarms. Right. As you say, they, they don't work. Right. Something I mentioned before I, I don't want to just gloss over because I think it's important because we see now that you respond to these types of emergencies and fires and things like a tornado when they come along and that the blood drives are continual and everything. But there are these other services that are available through Red Cross, and I mentioned CPR training as one of them. Uh, if I go back far enough, I, I think they even had a babysitting yes. course. Uh, what are those kinds of things that, that you do offer to the public? Right. What we do is, uh, that's called our, our uh, PHSS division. And what they do is CPR, first aid, life-saving courses, and there's a babysitting course. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, there's going to be one offered uh, through a local law firm in the Kingston area who is providing it as a service, and I believe they schedule for 40 children to be taught babysitting services. Mm -hmm. um, so any of that can be done. We, and CPR and first mm -hmm. aid, it of course, now also includes AED training. Mm -hmm. And we do it either at our location or if, you're com if you have a company, we'll do it at your location. And um, it, it, it's a very good service that we provide. One other great service we provide, because I, I believe you're a veteran. Uh, are you? No. no you're not? No, no. I'm not either. No, but I'm just old. No, but, <laughs> <laughs> but we provide a lot of stuff for veterans. And one thing I did not know, if you're in the military and you get called home for, a, God forbid, a death in your family, you don't get released unless the Red Cross says it's okay. I had heard that, yes. Wow. We, we, are the, we, are, that? we are the third party, uh, unaffiliated, free, is you know, wheeling party fact? that we have to verify it's true that it is your relative and really? we give the military the yeah, okay I, and you come yeah, home. Yeah, that I was aware yeah. of. I never knew that. And we recently just, for our local veterans up the VA Medical Center Nursing Home, we just installed six mobile libraries with books because they, they had to close their library up there and they put in a couple computers for the veterans. And we felt it was important that we continue the, the books for the veterans. So we installed six mobile libraries with books that we wow. replenish the books every month. We hope that veterans will take them and use them, and they have been. Uh, we, it, it's after our first month, we had to bring up another 200 books. Sure. So it's, it's, great. it's a great service, great. and it, that's going real well. If, if someone is watching and they would like to help, uh, obviously they can make contributions to the Red Cross. They can help by giving uh, blood donations. Uh, what about if they actually feel like, you know, I'd like to step in for an hour a week or two hours a week as a volunteer. I know you'll train me. What do they have to do? With, what kind of qualifications do they need to, to be able to help out? You really don't need any qualifications. We take anyone's help. And there's always something to do with. If you worked at an office, maybe you could work at our front desk. 
You know, if you were a fireman, maybe you want to respond to fires with us and, and help people. There's always something to do. You might want to just go to a blood drive and sit at the desk and do paperwork. There's always something to do. And to sign up, and we're always looking for volunteers. You can, if you have a computer, you could go on to redcross.org, bottom right corner, there's a place to say volunteer. You could go in there and start filling in your paperwork. You can call any of our local offices, Wilkesbury, Scranton, Hazleton, or Tunkhannock. Leave a message, we'll have the volunteer coordinator call you back and we'll sign you up. And, and, where, and where are you located? The main place on Middle Road near the Hanover Industrial Estate? No, State? actually, that's the Blood Center. Oh, that's just the Blood that's Center. The blood I thought center. that was the main Nope, area. that's the Blood Center. I, I have an office in each of the locations, mm -hmm. but I spend most of my time between Wilkesbury and Sherman Street. Oh, I see. And Jefferson Sherman. Avenue right here in Scranton. Okay. And if anyone wants to send a donation, they can send it to any of the local offices, and we will make sure the money is spent locally. Okay, best way to reach Red Cross, whether it be for donations, whether it be for volunteering, whether it be questions for information, best way to get you guys? The, the best way is you could go on redcross.org, or the best way is to call my number, because I have my number forwarded to my cell phone. Which is? 570-846-3308. Okay. And that's my direct line. I have it forwarded to my cell phone. I answer it all the time. Bill Goldsworthy from uh, Red Cross. Thanks, Thank Bill. you. Thank yeah. you so Thank much. Thank you very I, much. I, I know we'll have you back again, and I'm hoping it's not in the wake of a whole lot of disasters. Uh, but I know that whether it is or not, you'll be... You'll be on the spot, so thank you so much. Well, I appreciate it, and uh, anytime uh, we hope you'll support us on Thursday, March 23rd, with our centennial celebration. Okay, thank you so much. Thank uh, you. Rusty Fendry, thank you. Hope you're on your thank you, Rusty. feet uh, again. Uh, thank, thank you, you sir. Sure. Mark McGlory, thank you for keeping us thank you, Mark. in focus. I'm David DeCosmo for ECTV Live. Till we see you again next week, here's hoping all your news is good.